securing America's borders. President Trump is now looking to deliver on his campaign promise of building that wall, and he wants to see the prototypes in person. We're calling on Congress to fund the border wall, which we're getting very close to. We have some wonderful uh, prototypes that have been put up, and uh, I may be going there very shortly to look at them in their final form. Joining us now is Fox News contributor, former head of the Hispanic Advisory Council for President Trump's campaign, Steve Cortez. Steve, what's your take on this? Well, you know, I think that President Trump, I call him President Promise Keeper. Uh, whether it's cutting our taxes or building the wall, this is a man who is fulfilling his promises, something that's very unusual in Washington, D.C. I also think, let's remember that this president is an entrepreneur, and he was literally a builder. So I'm not surprised that he wants to go and see the construction. Uh, for the last 50 years of his life, that's what he's done, is, is build magnificent buildings all over the world. Now he's going to build a wall. And by the way, the wall is not necessarily an anti-Mexico move, I would point out. Uh, getting our borders secure secure is not just good for the United States, and it clearly is for our economic and national security. It's also good for Mexico. They've had a lot less of a problem on their southern border because of what President Trump has already done to secure our border with Mexico. Steve, so President Trump has clearly made his priorities known uh, with the wall. Also, he endorsed the RAISE Act from Senators Cotton and Purdue. Right. When Congress gets to DACA, Will President Obama, or will President Trump, rather, um, do you see him leveraging DACA to get those priorities done? You know, I do. And I've actually had the chance to speak to him directly about that, exactly that. And I think a grand bargain is in order. I think we can achieve it in January, February at the latest. Uh, I disagree with some of the people on Team Trump will within Congress the White House or the campaign. That? I believe they will, uh, who, who want to get rid of DACA. I don't. I do think that while they are illegal immigrants, they're a different category who didn't choose to come here illegally, didn't choose to break our laws. They were brought here as children. In my opinion, they should be protected. The president certainly has indicated that. But it should be part of a grand compromise uh, in return for resources for the border, including walling, and I think even more importantly, serious limits, if not ending, chain migration. The visa lottery plus chain migration makes no sense for our economy makes no sense for our national security, and they have to be ended. James, and if you look at what's happened in this country and in Mexico, it really dovetails with what President Trump is talking about in terms of the, the immigrants who have come here and committed terror attacks on, uh, on Americans, uh, in some instances killing people. And then if you look at Mexico, this year is going to be, because of drug uh, gang violence, it's going to be the deadliest year in Mexico in modern history. Yes, we want to enforce the law. We want to uh, put uh, criminals behind bars. But uh, Steve, I, I'm uh, James Freeman here, by the way. Good to see you. I, uh, you I'm too. really worried about uh, the the possibility here. We've had all this good economic policy coming out of Washington in the last several months. Uh, I'm, I'm worried. We see the U.S. population growing very slowly. We were talking earlier in right. the uh, program about uh, some high tech worker shortages. Um, are we going to have some part of this plan that says uh, we're going to welcome in people who aren't criminals, that we, we want uh, talented people from around the world to come here? And I, I think it's a huge uh, part of the American economic recipe. I hope uh, the White House understands right. that. Yeah. No, and James, you make a great point. You know, there's only two ways to grow an economy, more people or more productivity, and preferably both, uh, which you've had most of American history. And you're right. I am troubled that the birth rate in America is declining and has stayed low since the Great Recession. Uh, so one way to add more people, obviously, is immigration. But we have to be smarter about immigration. Right now, the majority of immigrant-headed households in America, sadly, are receiving some form of government welfare. Uh, that's just antithetical to the, our history of immigration, where people came here hoping uh, and expecting nothing but an opportunity in the United States. So we have to be smarter about a merit-based system. And I, for one, would welcome increased immigration as long as that is the criteria. What skills and drive do you bring to our country? And as best we can tell, do you embrace our values? Do you love our Constitution? And do you want to be a contributor to our society uh, rather than a leech off of the and, taxpayer? And, uh, by the so way, if, we, if we move there, can contribute we can too, do that. Right? Sure. No, of course. Again, that's why I said the drive, too. I think that's part of it as well. I don't, we, we shouldn't just be welcoming in uh, engineers and physicians. We want a lot of them, uh, but we also need people who want to just work hard, uh, laborers in the United States. What we can't tolerate any longer, though, James, in my opinion, is 
is every year welcoming roughly a million, or I shouldn't say welcoming, but allowing uh, roughly a million illegal immigrants into the United States to compete, particularly in the manual workforce uh, labor market against legal Americans. Many of them, by the way, Hispanics, uh, who I think are affected by illegal immigration the worst of all. So, uh, but to your point, right. one Steve. way to grow an economy is more people. Let's make sure we're getting the best people. Steve, thank you. Steve Cortez, great to see you as always. Thank you.